So welcome to the three-part webinar series, Expand Your Digital Knowledge with the iTero Element. Tonight's presentation is, is being presented by Kelly Bevington and Brittany Carey. Today is part one, introduction to the iTero Element, Back to Basics. And right now it is my pleasure, I will be reading Kelly's bio. Um, Kelly Bevington, RDA, EFDA, is our Director of Intro Oral Technology. And Kelly had began her career in dentistry as a registered dental assistant by graduating from the Ryman College in Anaheim, California and becoming an EFDA over 20 years ago. She has a comprehensive knowledge of dentistry and the dental laboratory industry, holding positions in sales, operations, marketing, and most recently with NDX, managing our intraoral scanner training team. Kelly has clinically trained over 500 dentists, although I think that's a low number. Their teams, dental students, and residents, professionally trained on most major devices. Expert on scanning, yes she is, tissue retraction, management, and isolation. Kelly enjoys sharing her knowledge and has presented at the AACD, contributed to several cosmetic dentistry publications, and most recently authored a couple iOS blogs. And with that, I get to say, take it away, Kelly. Thanks so much, Jessica. I really appreciate it. Um, we're, we're going to start this evening with a short PowerPoint presentation that's specifically geared at uh, obtaining excellent tissue management as well as isolation and then move into a hands-on physical demonstration with Brittany, Brittany Carey is on screen here with us today. And Brittany joined NDX this past summer. Brittany is a registered dental hygienist um, and practiced for many years prior to shifting into the digital arena where she worked for several, in, in collaboration with several uh, scanner manufacturing companies, um, specifically working with private practice dentists as well as DSO dentists. So we're thrilled to have Brittany on our team and presenting the hands-on portion tonight. I'm gonna to continue forward with the PowerPoint presentation. So we're talking about back to basics, um, introducing the iTero Element Scanner to you. Uh, so predominantly for a newer user or someone that really just wants to sort of get up to speed a little bit more with their clinical scanning with the iTero Scanner. So this is our iOS training team, and I wanted to highlight everyone's existence um, to enforce the fact that we can help provide you support, one-on-one -on -one support across the country. And several different ways we do that is either by remotely accessing your scanner um, to review previous scans that you've already done, or to help you with a scan that you're doing that very day. So um, that we can do sort of really spur the moment from our computers and utilize this amazing technology we live in today, or we can potentially come into your practice and provide one-on-one -on -one demonstration and scan some actual patient scans. Um, a good example might be maybe it's your first implant scan or your first denture case or something a little more complicated that we're happy to come in, provide you support, and send those scans to the lab. So there's myself, um, and, and I sort of cover nationally. We have Brenda Kirkin, who is also a uh, dental assistant. She's a CDA, RDA, uh, EFTA out of Michigan. She covers the Midwest. Uh, Benister Poe is on the East Coast, and Ben was actually a dentist in the Philippines prior to working for Nobel BioCare in Three Shape. And then we have Brittany, who's here with us tonight. And Brittany is a uh, hygienist and covers our Western region. Sort of go through those quickly. If anybody needs individual um, contact information, please feel free to put that in the chat box um, and we'll send that information as part of our follow-up as well. So a little bit about why digital dentistry. I, I would presume that most of the people on the call have some level of experience with scanning. And uh, so it's not selling you on, on scanning, right? It, it improves our overall workflow and patient experience and saving time. And ultimately, once you're uh, proficient at it, 
saves you money on uh, overhead of impression materials and so forth. I like to, to show this um, scan for those individuals that might be in the 20 range where they, they haven't had a lot of opportunity to practice perhaps, and they feel like they're not catching on real quick. Uh, I can speak firsthand to that, that uh, I was an old dog that learned a new trick. So it can be done. Um, and I was probably more in that five to 15 scans with each varying device um, before feeling really confident with it. So no, it does take practice. Um, nobody should be expected to pick up the scanner for the first time and be able to scan in less than a minute. It, that's not reality for most people. So what can the scanner scan for? Um, most individuals, when they first get into scanning, are scanning either for some sort of appliance, an orthodontic aligner, or a crown. So know that, that really anything we can take an analog, a physical impression of, whether it be alginate or PVS, we can now take as a digital scan. It's super exciting. I mean, just in the last year, year and a half, the transition that has occurred with fully edential scanning or being able to scan a denture itself, like with a wash impression, is amazing. So uh, crowns, bridges, implants, removable partials and dentures, as well as surgical guides and bite splints, orthodontic appliances and sleep appliances too. So um, I, I encourage you to give them all a try. Uh, an item that you will receive via email is something I'm going to refer to tonight. And it just has some basic tricks and tips and materials that we have found to be beneficial in achieving great isolation and gingival tissue retraction to expose the margin um, prior to scanning. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about this here. Uh, and so I don't want anyone to think that these items I'm mentioning are required to get a good digital scan, they're not. Um, However, as a very new user scanning all by yourself without the use of an assistant, um, they can be very helpful. So one of the items that is my go-to is the Optergate in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, it's unidose, so it's disposable and works great, especially for that more geriatric patient that they've lost their elasticity in their lips and cheeks. It really helps to keep the lips and cheeks out of the way enabling you to get that scan, whether it be a, a full complement of dentition or perhaps it's a partially or fully edentulous patient. Um, if, you're, if you're opposed to um, disposable, a green option that's autoclavable is a comfort view by Premier and it is autoclavable. Um, and then if you do have an assistant, this is a really nifty device. It's called ScanMate. It's autoclavable, the head is bendable, and it's very gentle to the uh, oral tissues. So you can retract the lips and cheeks to, um, especially when, when capturing some uh, removable anatomical landmarks that you'll want for removable um, prosthesis. One of the items on the scanner is uh, specific to checking your occlusal reduction at the conclusion of your scan. So once you have your operative scan, your opposing scan and your bite registration, you're able to check and um, identify whether you've reduced your prep enough for the particular product that you're asking for, the type of material that you want that crown made out of. Excellent feature, really cool feature. And I would highly suggest that you check that before you ever take a digital or physical impression. So just double check that you have enough occlusal reduction. This is my favorite, it's called a prep check. You bite down, you have the patient bite down on the little green tab and it leaves a green mark. If indeed there is not enough reduction on the prep itself. Um, other ways to do that might be with a ball burnisher, a perio pro. You could use calipers to have a patient bite into a piece of wax and measure with the calipers to um, confirm that there's enough reduction. So um, eyes themselves can be a little deceiving, especially on those maxillary second molars.
So this is an example of a textbook prep and gingival tissue retraction and isolation. And what I mean by gingival tissue retraction is the exposure of the margin. It's critically important. That is our greatest part of the foundation that we do in um, acquiring the data from a digital scan. So you absolutely want to be able to see that margin 360 degrees. Um, people will tell you, oh, you know, keep your keep your prep supra gingival and, and you'll be good. Well, in theory, that's fantastic. In reality, sometimes the the decay um, goes sub G, right? And you have to chase the decay and, and, and eliminate it. So in that event, um, it's it's important that you're using something to create lateral and apical retraction of that gingival tissue to expose that margin. So a couple different ways in which you can achieve that. Um, and, and I will say I'm a little more old school, if you will, um, a gold standard for me or best practice for me really is a double cord technique where I'll place a double or triple uh, zero cord in first, followed by perhaps another double zero or a one. It depends what the what the tissue can can take. Um, and it's important that um, both cords are applied and that there's no hemorrhaging. So some sort of a hemostatic agent is very helpful. I like the Viscostat. Um, it's a Ultradent product and it has a sponge tip applicator that you can really burnish the um, hemostatic agent into the tissue itself. It works really nicely. And then um, once it sits for a, a period of time, you want to remove the top cord only, make sure everything's really nice and dry before you begin scanning. A couple other ways of uh, achieving that gingival tissue retraction is some sort of a retraction paste. And I, I think retraction paste can work wonderfully. I think it's really important that the assistant is properly educated on how to use them. So you want to take the tip of the device of the applicator and and express the retraction paste into the sulcus, creating that expansion, that lateral and uh, apical retraction of the gingival tissue versus just applying it on top of the gingival tissue and using it as a, as a hemostatic agent. It'll work as a hemostatic agent, but it's not doing anything to really push that tissue away from the prep and exposing the margin. So in, in addition to the retraction paste, I like the copper cap, which is the item here in the bottom right hand corner. Um, you have the patient bite into it and it pushes that paste even further into the sulcus. There are other items that work well. Um, a laser can work well. I've had many practices, many dentists um, prescribe to using rotary curatage where, where they take the burr um, and, and trim the tissue around the prep. I'm personally not a fan of that. It, it can really appear like hamburger on the screen and it's difficult to maintain any kind of hemostasis. Um, so uh, recently I was introduced to putting bite material inside of the temporary by an assistant who makes a temp before she actually scans and she has them bite into a little bit of blue mousse just on the edge of the temp. Uh, that worked really well, not great as a hemostatic agent, but really well to retract the tissue. So there's multiple ways to um, achieve it. Uh, this is uh, the invitation. I don't know if you received the invitation of the entire series. Um, so on top of tonight being a back to basics, we're gonna have um, another one. There are three consecutive uh, Tuesdays. Another one will be specific to the corrective action tools that the iTero has. And then lastly, will be specific to implants. Um, please know that we're here to support you And I am going to stop sharing my screen at this point. So Brittany, I'm going to say, take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. Hi, everyone. Uh, first, I just wanted to um, kind of give you a brief introduction to the iTero scanner. Um, we do call this the wand. And um, 
just wanted to show you um, this little guy here. This is called a scanning sleeve. Um, these are disposable. They're just one-time use. They're meant to be thrown away um, immediately after use. And uh, there is another tip that looks very similar to this uh, where it's blue. We call it the blue tip. Uh, very important to have on hand um, to have over the lens to make sure that the lens is protected when the scanner is not in use. Um, and it's also a great identifier so that anyone who walks up to the scanner knows that it is sanitized and ready to be used. Uh, so I just turned the scanner on. Um, so this is the screen that you see as soon as it's on. So first, we're just gonna go over all of the icons. Uh, we'll start with this uh, green help icon. If we select it, it's great because it actually gives us a brief description of just about every icon on the screen. Uh, no matter where you are, what screen you're looking at on the scanner itself. Um, so I'll go over uh, this great feature, which is the headset. Um, we'll go over the settings, the gear setting, the padlock to lock the screen, um, and the graduation cap, which is the learning home center. Of course, if it's a brand new patient, you're doing a brand new scan on a new patient, you're gonna select that. Existing patients can be found here scans that have been sent or scans that have been done and just weren't finished will be in orders. And in your messages uh, will be, you know, messages from Align Tech letting you know about important updates for your scanner. Um, but this icon right here, the headset, um, is great. It's great. Uh, this is how people are able to remote into your scanner to support you. Uh, whether it be us from the lab, we can do it on the fly. Um, it could be iTero's technical support team um, so that they can visually see what's happening with the scanner. Um, if I were to click it, <laughs> I'm not going to, um, it would open Team Viewer. Uh, it would show your scanner ID as well as uh, a password to log in that you would provide us to log in. So next, we're going to go to the gear setting. So this is where all of the scanner settings are located. Specifically, I want to show you the scan settings. Pretty straightforward. Um, whether you want to see color while scanning or not can be uh, enabled or disabled here. Um, but this right here, super important. We do highly recommend um, anyone brand new to scanning, whether it be an office's first scanner experience um, or a new hire, if they have new hires that are just getting their hands on the scanner, um, to always have the guidance hints enabled. And you will see what that looks like. It's kind of a little dialogue box with just some, just a quick uh, visual refresher, so to speak, uh, right before scanning. And to exit out, I'm just going to hit the back button here and the X. The padlock, um, you want to touch this whenever you're ready to, uh, to clean the scanner, you know, to disinfect the scanner. Uh, so that way, you know, because it's touch screen, you don't want to be accidentally touching buttons while you're doing that. Uh, the graduation cap is amazing. Uh, it's the learning center. You go here, you can select your language. It brings up their menu. Uh, because we're, do we're focusing on restorative, just quickly show you what that looks like. Look at all this great material you can view. They even have a video library, and depending on my internet connection. Oh, they loaded, nice. Um, and these can all be found on the scanner itself, um, or it can be found on your myitero.com account too. Great for anyone who maybe at the beginning of the day knows that they're going to be scanning. Um, Great refresher. Some of the videos are very brief, uh, less than five minutes. And they cover a wide variety of things, like you saw. Now, before I start, I'm actually going to select the iTero Element logo, which will open demo mode. And demo mode is fantastic for practice, because you can't actually send any scans um, to any labs <laughs> to accidentally fabricate something. Um, 
And so it also doesn't interfere with uh, your patients that are on your scanner. Uh, you don't even need a password. I'm just gonna click Dr. Itero demo, log in, great. We know that we're in demo mode because it tells us we're in demo mode. So I'm just gonna pretend that we're scanning a brand new patient. And we see these four icons here. Um, the scanning process is we start with the RX. This is where we scan, post-processing, and then we hit the envelope to send the scan when, we're com when it's completed. I'm gonna hit the little plus on here. And I'm just gonna quickly type in crown, test, date of birth, a little tricky. Uh, you have to put the year first. I'm just gonna put a random year, birthday, female. One, two, three, four. Oh, look at that. We already have a patient by that name. So it's going to prompt us. This patient has the same details, already exists. Is this the same patient? Why, yes it is. Great to avoid uh, duplicate patients in the scanner. Uh, so first of all, we're going to put in the case type. Again, we're doing a restorative scan today of a single unit crown. Uh, we see the dentition up here, send to, we're gonna choose our lab. Again, because in dem we're in demo mode, the only lab you have to choose from is Clear Smiles, and it doesn't actually go anywhere, which is great. Uh, you can even uh, put in the due date. It automatically puts it at two weeks out, but of course that can be altered if you'd like. Uh, my prep today is tooth number 14. Uh, we've got all of these options to choose from. So again, we're doing the crown. These red asterisks, can I say that right? <laughs> asterisks? Um, means that uh, these are required. This is required information in order to proceed. Um, you've got all of these materials to choose from. I'm just gonna go with full contour zirconia. Prep design. Chamfer or shoulder are your only options. Uh, that is what the scanner is able to capture best. I'll just choose a random shade, but you can see that I could put an incisal or gingival third shade or even a stump shade. Here we have the Vita Lumen shade system. They also have the 3D Master or Other. If I were to select Other, um, I would highly recommend putting the shade system that you do use as well as the shade under body, like a free free type. So once we're done with that, I'm just gonna hit the back arrow and we can see that my prep's right here. Now if I had another prep, I just wanted to show you guys this little time saver. If we had another crown, maybe it even had all of the same information as the other prep. Um, we can copy from tooth. and it automatically populates that for you, which is very handy if you're doing multiple preps. I'm gonna delete that though, because we're not. And I'm gonna scroll down. We see all of this information here with the crown. The notes section cannot be missed. Uh, very important if you have um, any special information that you know the lab would benefit from knowing, should always go here. Um, any additional information you can provide the lab, the better. And when we're ready to scan, we just go up here to the scanning icon. Okay, so we see uh, the guidance hints. The system automatically puts the prep first, which I set that in the settings. Um, but it's always best practice to scan the prep first after it's done, when it's the cleanest. Because um, like Kelly said, you, you know, the field needs to be isolated, the tissue needs to be retracted, the margin fully exposed, and free of any cord, tissue, material, saliva, <laughs> fluid, um, very important. So again, just a little reminder, it tells you um, that with the iTero, the scan path protocol is a clusal lingual buckle. 
Um, and what's also important to note is that in the prep segment of the scan, um, we do not need anything but the prep. Um, and we actually, if I just press, let's see, I need to activate my other camera. Give me a moment. So because the <laughs> we have the scanner activated, even though it's not uh, turned on yet, um, just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use um, a scanner sleeve just to show you um, that over the prep, we can either come in from the front of the mouth. We could, if it's easier with a posterior tooth, we could come in perpendicular as well. Um, the scan should only take 8 to 10 seconds for the prep and no more. Uh, we say less is best. So we're going to, um, now because the scanner only scans teeth, you want to show it uh, the occlusal surface first always because that has the most uh, points of data. So we're going to align the crosshairs, like it says, we're going to align the crosshairs of the scanner. You can see that in the bottom left hand side of the screen right here, we have these green crosshairs. We want to put the prep in the center. And what's very important is that um, the angulation that we get, we want to make sure that when, so we go occlusal, when we turn towards the lingual that we're getting um, straight on the tooth, almost a 90 degree angle, just to show the true length of the prep. And then we're going to roll over the occlusal surface um, and come around the buckle anteriorly. Uh, with the iTero, you want to be touching the teeth at all times. No hovering. Um, we do hold the wand as well. I don't know if you can see this very well. Um, underhand. And then we use our thumb and four fingers um, to fulcrum, to guide us and keep us steady as we scan. I'm just going to go over. Line the prep. I'm really twisting to get that angle. And on the buckle. So now we're going to flip this around because I want to make sure that I have captured all of the information that I want with the prep. And I actually don't really like that. So I'm going to hold my finger on the screen. And I'm going to select segment, which is going to delete it. Again, getting that angulation. And turn it off. OK, great. There's a little bit more space between our prep and that terminal molar. Perfect. Now this green dot in the center of my prep, well, I'm, I'm going to move it to the center of my prep. Uh, this is what tells the scanner, hey, this is my prep. Now we see here, um, we could very well just click here or here or here, um, but it's much easier to just follow the, the little arrow prompts right here. Um, so that way we're not accidentally maybe scanning, you know, the opposite arch, scanning an arch under the wrong arch segment. Um, so it's, again, guidance hints. It's reminding us occlusal lingual buckle. We capture the contacts of the adjacent teeth in this, for the prep uh, in this scan. So again, I have my... Lens touching the teeth. I have terminal molar selected. Now, as soon as we see the data appearing in the middle of the screen, that means the scanner has captured it. So we can move on and we can go as fast as the scanner allows. The scanner does take 6,000 images per second. So it's very important that we scan efficiently and as quickly as possible.
Now, before I turn the scanner off, I want to take a look at my scan. So we're missing a bit of information. And that's okay, because we have a handy dandy tool called the fill tool that we will utilize to capture that data. So again, I'm just gonna use the arrow prompt to scan the lower. Starting at the occlusal surface of that terminal molar. Getting that angle. Now scanning with the iTero, ergonomically, you want to be sitting at 12 o'clock behind the patient. Um, you don't want to be looking uh, into the patient's mouth. Um, you want, your focus should be here in this window and then just kind of glancing over here to make sure that the scanner is following along. Because it is possible that we scan too fast and it loses us. In which case, we just want to show it an occlusal surface that it's already found. Now the bite. As we all know, the bite is very important. We want to make sure that the patient is biting in centric occlusion. Uh, so if that means that the patient could benefit from biting down five times, <laughs> um, or maybe sitting the patient up at a 45 degree angle, whatever would be the most helpful. Now I, my experience is showing the scanner um, more teeth instead of the prep will capture the bite a lot faster. So I'm just going to move it up and down. And as soon as we see that purple, we know we've captured it. We will sometimes see the purple bite just kind of hanging around down here at the bottom of our screen. Um, that is just the scanner trying to decide where it fits. So at this point, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna use the fill tool. Um, my prep looks great in color. I'm gonna switch over to monochrome though. And I want to make sure that I can see everything. Um, the margin from a 360 view, like Kelly had said. We're going to move on to the next one. I know I've missed quite a bit of information. So I'm going to put my finger, hold my finger down on the screen. And I guess I'll introduce these little, um, these tools. Again, segment, we would erase the entire scan like I did earlier. Um, selection, personally, I, I avoid using selection. You can use your finger to sweep away. Um, you can sweep away data, but <laughs> I always end up sweeping away the good data. So I just kind of avoid using that. Uh, disable AI cleanup, that's just for, you know, you would only disable if you're scanning for a removable product when you need to capture the tissue, otherwise the scanner um, with the AI cleanup enabled will say you accidentally scanned your glove or part of the patient's tongue. Um, it would clean that up automatically for us. So we're gonna use fill. Oops. Now that was very fast, um, that little hourglass figure, which is great, that's what we like. We don't like to watch the hourglass figure turn for over 15 <laughs> seconds. Uh, though that can happen, that is a clear indicator that we have overscanned. We're, there's too much data that the scanner is trying to process. Um, so fill tool does time out, so I do want to be pretty quick with this. And I'm just going to do a lot of pivoting. And actually, I'll show you a trick to get the mesial surfaces, I can kind of place the lens um, on the lingual of the anteriors and just pivot. And once I see um, the areas filling in yellow, it's a very light yellow color, um, I just hold that position as I move back. 
and then from the other side. Again, we're just pivoting. And right there is a really good spot where you can see where the mesial contact wall of the second molar is encircled in red, and now it's filling in with the yellow. So hence the name fill tool. Yeah. Yeah, really good example. Now before I turn it off, I do want to look at it from a 360 view, make sure I've captured everything. First, I want to show you guys what a perfect scan looks like. Okay. Super great. Um, and the fill tool actually adds uh, the new data to the base layer of the scan, which is exactly what we want. In case we have indeed overscanned a little, um, the lab gets the base scan. So again, I'm holding my finger down on the screen. And we see that hourglass. Show the scanner something that it knows. I guess I should show my trick again. Again, get that angulation and hold it. So Brittany, we have a question um, reiterating exactly what the fill tool is again. They were not familiar with its existence. So in an effort to avoid over scanning, um, we have our best friend, the fill tool. And again, the fill tool's sole purpose is to gather data where we have missed it and add it to the base layer of the scan, which is what the lab receives, um, instead of continuously scanning and adding more layers, which the lab does not receive. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah. Do you have anything to add to that? <laughs> um, the the only thing I have to add to that is, you know, multiple layers can potentially cause distortion of the impression. That's really impossible for us to see with the naked eye, right? So it looks like we've captured everything, but if you have gone over a particular area multiple times, um, that's referred to as over scanning. And those multiple layers will distort the digital model. So that's why it's really important to use such a feature as the fill tool that um, Align was, uh, you know, awesome enough to develop, right, to create uh, and and utilize it that way. Um, we have another question: Is it best to scan in monochrome or color? Ooh, thank um, you for yeah, I'll answer and then I'll let you answer it, Brittany, because I don't sure. know what philosophy is. So I'm a dental person and I'm accustomed to looking in the oral cavity. So for me, I prefer to scan in color, seeing the natural dentition, you know, uh, if there's hemorrhaging going on, uh, what type of moisture, I, I can see all that instantly and recognize it instantly when scanning in color. Um, I know there are people that prefer to, to scan in monochrome, but I prefer to toggle to monochrome as an evaluation and an assessment of my scan versus scanning in the stone color right from the get-go. How about you, Brittany? I prefer to scan in monochrome. I don't know if it's my high, hygiene brain, um, but <laughs> the color kind of is a distraction to me. Um, and so the monochrome really kind of keeps me in check. It's, it's a lot easier for me to identify um, where in the mouth, you know, I need to be. Um, but yeah, it's totally personal preference. So the basic answer is it, is it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 
but you do yes. want to make sure that you're at least toggling between the two uh, yes. to make sure that you're getting the benefits of both. Absolutely. Both of you. Oh, and um, we have another question. Thank you. Can you um, show again how you access the fill tool, please? Oh, definitely. Um, so I had gone forward. Um, hmm. Can I just pause on that question really quick? Because I of course. would yep. love you can go backwards to, to reshow it. Yep. Well, I was thinking, do we have time to talk about one of the corrective action tools, do you think? Uh, or should we save that for next? Yeah. I mean, we've got we've got 15 more minutes. So yeah, sure. Go go right ahead. The okay. occlusal clearance. Yeah. So the the occlusal clearance map is an occlusal clearance map. <laughs> Um, so if we see in red, um, and maybe we need to, you know, perform a, re a reduction on the prep, what we want to do is use our handy dandy eraser tool. Um, and you can see that I have strategically placed um, my prep like that, completely horizontal, because what I'm going to end up doing is actually circling the crown portion of the prep. Um, very hard to see right now, uh, but it completely erased it. It's keeping the data that we like um, so we can rescan. So I'm going to click on the scanner icon. It brings us back to our scanning area, which is where we can access the fill tool. And I just kind of like to do a little circle motion. Kind of like a 360. Wow, if I was looking where I need to be. There we go. And something that might be difficult to really experience uh, via this video, right? This not video, this webinar, is that when um, Brittany is touching the screen to access the fill tool, the the drop down that has the fill tool as an option, she's pressing and sort of holding on the screen. It's not a quick tap, it's a press and pause, which brings up that menu. Yes, uh, and it can be a little uh, tricky with uh, your finger sometimes. Um, but yeah, you just press one finger on there and of course, it's not going to show it because it's saying, you know, this isn't the right time, but it would be listed here. So I'm just pressing my finger on the screen and I can select those options at any time. Now, the fill tool does time out, so we do have to be pretty quick about it. I'm kind of surprised it didn't time out on me <laughs> for you guys. But um, now over here, again, is post-processing. This is where we can evaluate. Um, Again, with the occlusal clearance map, we can talk to our patient, um, show them in color exactly, you know, everything put together. Um, we'll go over the rest of the corrective action tools uh, next week. But I did want to point out that another 360 view, we want to make sure yep. that we can see a clear defined margin and all that good stuff. Um, is there can anything you flip it to show the inverted again, please? I don't know. Happy to. Yeah, so if you flip it to, um, to show the inverted view, you can actually see an image that would be very similar to what you're accustomed to looking at in a PVS impression. So especially for new users, I always like to call that attention um, to people so that they can see that. Okay, perfect. Uh, now, assuming, I mean, our scan is awesome. Um, so once we are done, we would hit the envelope here. Um, we highly recommend uh, because a digital imp impression is still a final impression um, that it is reviewed by a doctor to approve the scan before it being sent to a lab but you would just press this here my handy my pretty little test signature and you would just hit confirm and send i don't know how long that will take do we have any other questions while we wait 
for it to be sent, quote unquote, sent to nowhere. <laughs> I'd like to demonstrate uh, the orders where they will find their scans. The orders would be terrific. Now this can take um, a minute, depending on your internet connection. Of course. I'm going to jump in, ladies. The question is, are there any telltale signs of overscanning, or do the scans look just fine? That's actually a really good question. So the my immediate answer is going to be no. Um, there aren't real obvious signs, um, especially after post-processing. However, experiencing this myself, I will share with you that if you have um, problems getting your scans to stitch together, and it seems like the, the computer it is sort of slow to respond, um, that I think is a good indicator that you're over scanning a particular area, that it should have been one smooth, concise, clean motion instead of going back and forth and and think of it as the is the computer is almost confused to trying to figure out how to put together this puzzle of individual photos can a, can an assistant bat the prep scan take the prep scan maybe um, I'm going to defer to what what the rules and regulations are in your particular, state heather if you can make a final impression um or or you know many people it's identified as uh, reversible or irreversible impressions so in the analog world we consider a pbs as an irreversible impression um, the digital impression can be interpreted as because you can just hit the delete button. So refer back to your particular state's regulations and the dentist that you're working for. Uh, so I went back um, to the homepage and under orders we see one. Uh, so what's great about this is it does, it does show you at the very bottom all of your past orders um, and where it is. <laughs> And your in progress is always going to be above. Um, I did want to show this because once your scan is sent, it goes to your cloud. It is no longer stored on the scanner itself. However, if we have multiple in progress scans, that will slow your scanner down a lot. So we want to make sure that we are um, deleting any that are older. Um, maybe that, you know, they were in the middle of scanning and then they stopped for whatever reason. Um, so because I sent mine and it's being sent, it doesn't have the delete button. We can showcase that uh, next week. Yep. Absolutely. But it would be here. But it's super easy. You just tap on it, you tap on the case, and it'll be over here. Great, and I'll be able to show how to delete a scan uh, next week when doing the bridge and so forth. Um, Brittany, there was a question. Um, could you go back to your scan or a scan and show the icon that we use to toggle back and forth between yellow and mono, or I'm sorry, between color and monochromatic? Definitely. So we can actually do that in the viewer. This is a little bit different view um, from when we were scanning. Unfortunately, we're, once we send the scan, we are not able to go back um, to the views that we were looking at previously. But the, um, the icon to switch between color and monochrome will still be there. And it's this one right here. It is located right here on the post-processing screen. But you can tell because there's like a little slight shade of pink and <laughs> not a shade of pink on the other side. Terrific. Um, maybe I should show really quick. 
Are there any other uh, questions at all? Or Because I'd like to show them how to exit demo mode. Super easy. But I don't want to. Um, the only other question is, what is the best way to change uh, labs once a case has already been submitted? And uh, the only way to do that is to contact ITERO support directly and provide them the case ID and patient name, and then they can make that alteration for you. Your case ID will be located right here. Yep. You can see all of these case IDs and then your patient name. Also, any adjustments to a, a scan um, can only be done for 21 days after you've initially scanned it. Not after you've sent it, but after you've initially scanned it. So that's something to take into consideration as well. Definitely. Uh, now to exit demo mode, because I know we're short on time, is you just click the ITERO, ITERO element logo one last time and hit exit demo. Thanks for joining everybody. Around, Looking forward to seeing you all class. next week. So we have uh, two more sessions, two consecutive uh, weeks of ITERO learning. So, uh, um, thanks, everybody. Brittany yeah. and Kelly, uh, you're a joy to have on here. And um, I can't wait for next week. Audience, I hope you can't wait either. But yeah. feel free to reach out to Kelly and Brittany in the meantime, especially if you want to schedule your own personalized session with them. And they would enjoy working with you and your office. Absolutely. Ladies, is there any closing remarks? Really just um, thank you, truly, uh, from the bottom of my heart. I, I love what I do. I am blessed to uh, to do what I love to do, you know, right? To, to, to have a career in dentistry that is super exciting every day and uh, continue to learn. So I enjoy sharing that knowledge uh, with you. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Brittany, how would you like to close out with the year audience your captive audience this evening oh my gosh uh can i just say ditto <laughs> can i just say what she said <laughs> yeah, <You> wonderful <laughs> Well, I thoroughly enjoyed, you know, I'm not the clinician in here, so I thoroughly enjoyed the technical training and uh, to get to be a part of what you two perfect on a daily basis. So well, good night, right. everybody. Thank you for awesome. joining us. Bye bye.